G'day everyone, welcome to Brushes with Beck. Today's video is about Canson Matons paper. I wanted to give you a bit of an overview of this paper, some thoughts on how to use it, and also a bit of a review and my thoughts on this paper. Before I get started, I just wanted to say that I am not sponsored by Canson or anything like that. They didn't give me this paper, I bought it myself. So all thoughts and opinions on it are my own. So what is it? What is Canson Matons? It is a pastel paper. I am probably pronouncing the name wrong, so my apologies to anybody who knows the correct way to pronounce it. So it's a pastel paper, but it can also be used for other mediums, such as coloured pencil, which is what I use it for. It is an archival paper, meaning that it shouldn't deteriorate over time or discolour. And it comes in a wide array of colours, with 50 colours available, which is a huge amount of colours which includes a range of pale, warm, neutral tones, which is this one here, and also a range of grey tones, which is this one here, and also this one. Now, it also has a wide variety of bright colours, such as greens, blues, and oranges, etc. Basically, the choices are endless, and the colour range makes it really well suited for almost any subject you can possibly want to do, basically. So the paper comes in a variety of sizes and formats, with different colour combinations available in pads of various sizes, along with buying the sheets or rolls of this paper. I only have some pads of the paper. I have an A5 of 15 sheets of the grey tones. This is just an older cover. And two A4 pads with 15 sheets each of the neutral tones, sorry, the neutral tones, and 15 sheets of the grey tones. I have noticed that a number of the grey tones are quite speckled in colour. Let me find one here. But all of the neutral tones are one flat colour. As you can see, this one's quite speckled and this one is just a flat colour. Now this paper is not very thick. It's only 160 GSM, so it's quite quite thin and flexible, so it's not really suitable for wet media such as using solvents to blend out coloured pencil. However, there is a Canson Mitton's Touch Paper, formerly known as Tex, which is a heavyweight 350 GSM card, which I have seen people use solvents on. I'm not sure if the texture is the same. From what I've read, I don't think it is, but I haven't used it myself and it only comes in a range of 11 colours. So that's something I will have to look into more to try for myself to see if I like it. If you have watched some of my previous videos, you will have probably seen me use Canson Matons at some point. I have done quite a number of pieces on it, including last week's video of a black and white cat, which I don't have here because that was a commission piece for somebody. And that has already been sent off to them. I'll link some videos in the cards above and in the comments section down below of some of the pieces that I've done, which includes some of these that you see in front of you. Something to keep in mind when you are using this paper is that it has two different sides. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see this on camera, but this is the top or the front side, which is more of a textured, I'm going to call it canvassy type texture. On their website, Canson describes it as a honeycomb texture. And the reverse side of the paper has a fine grained texture. I personally prefer to use the reverse side of the paper uh, for coloured pencil and it is what I have used in the videos that I have linked. Now to show you what I mean I'm going to use this paper to illustrate the difference. This is from the grey tones pad and it's the sort of a blue colour. This is the colour I used for my white browed babbler drawing which admittedly was probably the wrong colour choice for that piece but you live and learn. So I'm going to go in with a dark blue. Now this piece on the left is the front side of the paper which is the honeycomb texture and this piece on the right is the reverse side which is the fine grain. So I'm just going to do light pressure and you can see the colors going down quite strong and you can see that strong texture coming through as I'm colouring and then on the fine grain you can see it's much less textured already but I'm still getting quite a lot of pigment down there. So I'm just going to go over that with 
go over that with a light blue and see if I can blend it out smooth it out over the bottom half here you can see that still remains quite textured and this one's a little bit smoother and if I press quite hard over that sorry my cat keeps walking in the light if I press quite hard over that there's really not a lot of texture coming through there but still a lot of texture coming through and actually it's becoming more obvious with a firmer pressure this texture on the left hand side with the front side of the paper get off of there so I just want to show you with a cotton bud how this blends out now with not much pressure at all it smooths out and blends out really nicely on this paper and you can fill in a little bit more of that tooth not the whole lot but it is filling it in and then the same on the fine grain on the reverse side there it just it really carries that pigment and you can blend it out quite easily with the cotton bud which is a really good thing now I have found layering to be quite easy on this paper I'm going to show you in a moment I just thought I'd put a different color down as well on both of these very very quickly and show you that I can put pigment over the top where's a good one where's my white here's a what's this this is polychromos ivory and it goes quite nicely over the top of even the darker areas and but when I have a pencil like the Derwent drawing Chinese white which is very opaque that shows up even better and I can easily do whiskers with this pencil over the top of anything I've done on this paper so let me just do a quick blend and just do a transition so like I said before there's really no this isn't smooth at all the texture is quite regular which I think makes it more obvious than it was more than if it was more of an irregular texture but because it's quite sort of a very defined pattern to the texture oops I'm getting blue in that that's okay it makes it stand out quite substantially and you may want this might be this texture might be really beneficial if you're drawing like some sort of reptile like a, a lizard but otherwise I find it's just too textured for my liking and I like this fine texture on the back that still grabs the pencil but it's not a very regular texture and so you can it's less obvious and you can get rid of it more easily with some blending and layering And of course, the sharper your point on your pencil, the more you are going to get color into the valleys of that texture. Anyway, getting distracted there, but you can see a few examples of the difference in the front and the reverse side of that paper. Both sides work just as well in terms of laying color over the top, but the texture is very obvious on the front side, and I much prefer the texture from the reverse side. So light colors go over the top of dark colors without much trouble. There, to me, there does seem to be a point where adding layers becomes more difficult. Um, I've not yet had the paper not accept pigment as a result, simply that some of the later layers require more pressure to apply than the earlier layers, which is okay because it's good to go in with light pressure first anyway. 
So long as you don't go in too hard too early, you shouldn't have trouble layering these pencil. You shouldn't have trouble layering on this paper. So one of the things I really enjoy about textured paper is that it allows for quick color lay down, as you probably saw. Because the texture grabs the pigment, it lays down much quicker than a smooth paper, such as a Bristol, where I find I really have to work hard to lay down color and apply quite a lot of pressure, even for a light application of color, which I find extremely tiring on my hand. So overall, I really enjoy using this paper. The quick color lay down makes it ap an absolute breeze to work on. Plus the ability to layer lighter colors over darker colors really makes it easier to add in things like whiskers at the end or to correct mistakes. The wide variety of color options makes it a really, really versatile choice. And I'm honestly trying to think of something I don't like about it, but I haven't thought of anything yet. I suppose the only thing that could be negative might be what I mentioned earlier about layering becoming difficult with too many layers and needing to apply more pressure to continue to add those layers. But as I mentioned before, this hasn't prevented me from adding color at any point. In terms of price point, I find the Mittons to be very affordable. It's not a cheap paper, but it's certainly not expensive by comparison to some other papers. If you've enjoyed this video, I'll please ask that you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more art content. Let me know in the comments down below if you have used Cancer Matons paper before for coloured pencil, and if so, did you love it or did you hate it? What are some of your pros and cons for this paper? Thank you very much for watching. Stay creative.